Hi and welcome to Mrs. Long's video lesson on the picture of Dorian Gray. Today we're looking at the penultimate chapter of the novel. So it seems that the, there would have been some time that has passed between the previous chapter and the setting of this chapter, which is a discussion that takes place between Dorian and Lord Henry in Lord Henry's house. And in their discussion, quite a few of the more um, interesting plot lines sort of get wrapped up and we have Dorian's resolution, seeming resolution that he's going to try and be better. And first Lord Henry's first reaction is to say, there's no use you're telling me you're going to be good, cried Lord Henry. You are quite perfect, don't change. Of course, Lord Henry is only basing the perfection on what he can see on Dorian and we know that Appearances are definitely deceiving when it comes to Dorian Gray. But Dorian replies, I've done too many dreadful things in my life. I'm not going to do any more. I began my good actions yesterday. And now it's very interesting in uh, what we see as Dorian's interpretation of his good action. So he says that he spared somebody. It was a young girl, quite like, quite beautiful like Sybil Vane, Hetty. But she's a simple country girl and she was in love with Dorian Gray. She was not one of our own class, of course, says Dorian, but I really loved her. Now that, of course, we have a, a more than an inkling of doubt about because so far we haven't ever been given evidence that Dorian is capable of true love. Anyway, they were to have gone away together. And then Dorian says, suddenly I determined to leave her as flower-like as I had found her. So. Dorian's gray version, Dorian Gray's version of being good is that he didn't run away with Hetty. Now, um, Harry can see the flaw, as most of us would be able to see, in Dorian's plan because he's left. He just, instead of meeting her to go away with her, he left her. He just sort of didn't show up. And so um, Harry points this out to Dorian, and he says, don't say these things, Hedgie's not, her heart is not broken. Of course she cried and all that, but there's no disgrace upon her. So he, he his version of being good is that he didn't um, bring any stain upon her reputation by having her run away unmarried. Of course, what, Dor what um, Dorian doesn't realize and what Henry points out is that now that she's um, been with somebody like Dorian Gray, do you think this girl will ever be really content with anyone of her own rank? Um, in other words, she's she's now got a taste of what life could be like with somebody like of Dorian's standing and class and wealth. And uh, Lord Henry says, no, she won't ever be happy um, with some carter or grinning plowman. So in other words, you've ruined her for other men. From a moral point of view, says Henry, I cannot say I think much of your great renunciation. <laughs> so yeah it's not you haven't really spared her because you've still caused her suffering and Dorian is upset you mock at everything and then suggest the most serious tragedies I know I was right in acting as I did don't try to persuade me that the first good action I've done for years the first little bit of self-sacrifice I've ever known is really a sort of sin I want to be better I'm going to be better now this sounds very similar to what Dorian said um, after he discovered the painting had changed for the first time as he decides that he wants to be good because he didn't want to see the degradation of the painting. Now, of course, Dorian's decision to be good is again based on selfish motives that he has realized that if he continues down the path that he's been on, he's only going to cause himself more suffering in the long run. After that brief discussion, which they turn back to at the end of the chapter, Lord Henry mentions that people are discussing Basil's appear disappearance. Now, obviously, this is not a topic of conversation that's comfortable for Dorian, and so he says, oh, I would have thought that people would have been tired of that by now. And uh, Lord Henry says, no, well, the British public They've only been talking about it for six weeks and they're not equal to the mental strain of having more than one topic every three months. 
They've been very fortunate lately, however. They've had my own divorce case and Alan Campbell's suicide. Now they've got the mysterious disappearance of an artist. Of course, there's probably no doubt in the reader's mind as to why Alan Campbell has committed suicide. Most likely it was the mental effect or the, the emotional effect of the blackmail and what Dorian Gray forced him to do, who could be expected to um, live through something like that and, and still be the same and maintain one's mental health. That's quite a sad ending to Alan Campbell's story. Yet another life um, gone at, as a result of Dorian's actions. Most people as well would not find uh, Lord Henry's divorce to be anything uh, of a shock. And in fact, I think in a, in a later excerpt, he says um, that, yeah, here it is, that uh, Victoria ran away with a man who played the piano. And we know she was very fond of music. Now, Lord Henry doesn't seem to be bothered at all by his wife's leaving him. Except he says, oh, I was very fond of her. The house is rather lonely without her. But then one regrets the loss of even one's worst habits. So it's almost as if he, he looked on her as a bad habit. We know they didn't have a close relationship. I don't think anyone is surprised that she ran away with somebody who probably paid her more attention than her husband did. Right. They go on to discuss, or Dorian brings up, what do you think happened to Basil? Of course, he is now sort of poking Lord Henry for information perhaps of how people would react um, to his disappearance. Henry doesn't seem all that bothered. He says, if Basil chooses to hide, it's no business of mine. If he's dead, I don't want to think about him. Death is the only thing that ever terrifies me. I hate it. And then he says, one can survive everything except that. So he doesn't want to think about the unpleasantness of the situation. Um, not because it's unpleasant that Basil would be dead, but that it affects Henry negatively. You'll see um, very definite parallels between Henry and Dorian's preoccupation with their own well-being over that of others. Dorian decides to poke even further and says, did it ever occur to you that Basil was murdered? Lord Henry yawns and says, oh, why should he be murdered? He wasn't clever enough to have any enemies, and he was very dull. He only interested me once, and that was when he had a wild adoration for you. And um, so he, he sort of, I suppose Lord Henry would view being murdered as some sort of romantic storyline, such as Sybil's, Sybil's death. And so he doesn't think that Basil was interesting enough to be killed <laughs> by somebody Dorian has a note of sadness and says, I was very fond of Basil. Don't people say he was murdered? Some of the papers do, said Lord Henry, but it does not seem to be, to be at all probable. Now, Dorian Gray gets even more interesting in this part of the conversation. He says, what would you say, Harry, if I told you that I had murdered Basil? And then he watched him intently. So you see he's testing the water. And just with as much sort of flippancy as Henry regards the idea of Basil being murdered, he says, well, I don't think you could have, you could be capable of murder. Crime is vulgar and, and all vulgar, vulgarity, vulgarity is a crime. And it's not in you, Dorian, to commit a murder. Sorry for hurt your vanity by saying so, but I assure you it's true. Crime belongs exclusively to the lower orders. I should fancy that crime was to them what art is to us, simply a method of procuring extraordinary sensations. They talk about later art later on in this chapter as well, and its ability to um, affect or inspire people. So he doesn't believe that Dorian's got it in him to commit a crime. And then he says, besides, I should fancy however murder is always a mistake. One should never do anything that one cannot talk about after dinner. So in other words, um, um, you know, the, the, he's very sort of, doesn't take the idea of murder seriously and said, besides, why would you do something that you couldn't sort of brag about? Um, the, then the conversation continues to, on to Basil and his, him being an artist. And 
Lord Henry notes notes that uh, Basil's painting had quite gone off, he says. It seemed to me to have lost something. When you and he ceased to be great friends, he ceased to be a great artist. What is it that separated you? I suppose he bored you. By the way, what has ever become of that wonderful portrait he did of you? So there's definitely a reference there to the rift that appeared between Henry or Basil and uh, Dorian on Henry's appearance on the scene. And now we know that uh, Dorian always has quite an extreme reaction whenever the portrait is mentioned. Dorian, uh, Henry says, I don't think I even have seen it since he finished it. Oh, I remember you telling me that you'd sent it down to Selby and had got mislaid. You never got it back. What a pity. So obviously Dorian has had to concoct a, a story about the disappearance of this portrait since he locked it away. Dorian says, oh, I forget. I suppose I did, but I never really liked it. I'm sorry I sat for it. Now, that is a very, very true statement there. Where he says, I'm sorry I sat for it. The memory of the thing is hateful to me. It used to remind me of those curious lines in some play, Hamlet, I think. And those of you who studied Hamlet this year will be familiar with this line. Like a painting of a sorrow, a face without a heart. So he's explaining why he didn't like the portrait. Of course, his observation of the portrait is very, very telling because the painting of a sorrow, well, it definitely has become a representation of sorrows, not only of Dor Dor Dorian's sorrow of, for his own life and the ruin that the painting reflects, but obviously because of um, what the painting reflects is a result of the sorrow that Dorian's called other people as well. And then a face without a heart, well, that's self-explanatory. Dorian is a beautiful face, but seems to be lacking the true empathy and humanity of somebody with a heart. I'm going to end this video here because there's still quite a lot to discuss on this chapter. So we will pick up um, from Lord Henry's response in the next video.